What is going on everybody? This is Keebs and in this video I'm going to be talking about Vargas and kind of what makes him good and why he is so powerful. So let's just take a look at his basic kit here. If we look at his stats, he has an S rating for HP and an S for defense. So just from first glance you can already tell he has really good stats for physical tanking. His magic defense is completely worthless. If you try to build any defense, magic defense on here to try to make up for it, you're completely wasting your time because any well-built mage will attack Vargas and laugh at all of your attempts to try to survive against their attack and before they throw you into the trash can. So for that reason, you definitely don't want to waste any time on Vargas' magic defense and you want to almost entirely focus on getting defense rolls for your for your enchantments and then trying to also get some some HP along the way to accompany the defense but defense should be your top priority and the reason for that is Vargas relies heavily on his skills the on the power stab buff that he gets from his skills to do damage so looking at Vargas's skills here really quick you'll see that he has a pretty decent variety of skills available to him. He has Heavy Shield, which I personally don't recommend. It's a two two skill point cost skill, and at only 25% chance to activate, it's so unreliable that I definitely I just cannot recommend using this skill. Attack Intimidate's not that great because of just his low mobility makes it hard for him to get into a position to debuff enough people with it for it to really be worth using. This is more of a skill for doing boss fights against someone like Phoenix or the Thunder Dragon. But really for Thunder Dragon, again, you're going to want Battlecry instead. So if you have not spent any runestones on your Vargas and you've only gone down his Royal Vanguard line, you're only going to have the Unbreakable Guardian skill, Heavy Shield, and Protect and Last Stand. You don't really have any options outside of that, so you don't really have any variety in what you can use. But if you do go down the Brave class, which I highly recommend you do, you're going to pick up Power Stab and Battle Cry, and these are going to be a part of, in my opinion, the optimal skill set that you can use for Vargas. The reason for that is, as you all know, when you use a guard skill for your tank, there's going to be that one awkward turn where when your guard skill runs out in two turns, you lose the benefit of the buffs that it provides. And for most tanks, like Vargas, Ledin, Aaron, and Grenier, well, Grenier has Iron Phalanx, but even for Iron Phalanx, it still also gives you a little bit of damage. So when that, tur when that one turn guard turn happens, where you lose all of the benefits from the two range guard, you pretty much lose your threat. You become pretty much a... You, you become less of a threat on the field, and it kind of makes it so that everybody can kind of attack you without much worry, because you're not going to do too much in retaliation to them. And for those... For that one awkward turn where you no longer have this buff, if you don't have it, everybody can attack you. And for that reason, you're going to want Power Stab because what it does is it refreshes the Power Stab buff for you. And it also deals 1.5 times damage. So this skill is going to not just hit hard, it's also going to refresh your Power Stab buff so that on the one turn where you would lose your two range guard, you're still able to effectively tank and deal damage back to the, uh, the enemies. Additionally, what this skill has over, for example, Leiden's Burning Sun is that it's only a two-round cooldown. So what this means is you can effectively have 100% uptime on your Power Stab buff because it, it rotates on the same amount of turns as Unbreakable Guardian. So as long as you have an enemy within range, whenever your Power Stab is about to run out, or at some sometime within the two turns while you have guard activated. If you can power stab someone, you can make sure that you have this active for the one turn where you no longer have two range guard. Additionally, Vargas's ability to have power stab gives him an offensive power that allows him to attack enemies. And for that for those situations, I know it might sound a little bit counterintuitive to have a tank that uses a, a skill 
that only applies when you're attacking. But what Battlecry does is just, it just does so much that it's really just far and away above the other one point skill cost skills that he has available. Uh, so what it does here is it'll dispel one buff from, from an enemy, which could be anything. And in a lot of cases, it could really dispel someone that or something that potentially could change the game for you. And it also decreases their attack and defense. So when you attack them, he also receives less damage in retaliation, as well as deals more damage thanks to the defense debuff. So very, very powerful skill. Great for content, for just general content, hitting anything. You can use it to dispel buffs from when you attack an enemy tank to dis potentially dispel their two range guard. Or if you're fighting enemies in PvE, you can use it to dispel their two range guard or their just their general guard because they only use a basic guard skill. So Battle Cry, Unbreakable Guardian, Power Stab. These are going to be, in my opinion, the optimal skill set that you want to be running on your Vargas. For soldiers, he doesn't have really too much going on here. He, he has about four soldiers that you can use. You have the Cyclops, the Vanguard Lancers, Lava Titans, and the Stone Colossus. Um, I, I don't feel like too many people really mention Vanguard Lancers, but they're definitely very solid soldiers. It's just that most people look at their tank and they think they want they want them to tank for you. However, for some re for some reason, people recommend Lava Titans, and while they don't give any any defensive skills, they do give a a debuff that does fix damage. But nobody really thinks about Vanguard Lancers, and I think that these really do have a place to be used in that. All, all you have to do is have your soldiers below 70% HP and then they're going to hit a little bit harder. So for situations where you like, where you have, say, someone using Regenerate on Vargas, you can make it so that you can revive these soldiers so that they can hit the enemy again. Or if you have a Tiaris, you can revive a few more of these soldiers and they're going to be within the threshold to be able to do this increased attack. So Vanguard Lancers are basically a defensive version of the Stone or an offensive version of the Stone Colossus and I really do think that they have a place in use uh, that you can kind of argue that they're interchangeable between the two depending on with which you want to use for either defense or offense. Lava Titans, they have their unique high fixed damage percentage based or HP percentage based debuff very very useful and cyclops are really nice because they give attack and defense and they activate not just when you're attacking but also when opponents are attacking you so if an enemy attacks you and they have less hp than you they're still going to activate and get this attack and defense buff and if you look at their defense stat here it's relatively comparable to the Lava Titans and even the Stone Colossus as long as you have the 30% debuff or the 30% defense buff activating from the Cyclops skill. So that's soldiers. These four are going to be your kind of the ones that you're going to go to. Orc Berserkers are pretty garbage. These things only give attack when you're above, well both of them, they only give their, bu their boosts above 80% HP which is extremely hard for someone who's playing the role of a tank. So that's soldiers. Finally, oh actually I think I skipped talking about his talent, so let's talk about his talent a little bit. Uh, what, what his talent does is, at high HP percentage, you're going to have a little bit of physical damage reduction. There's no, there's no magical aspect to this, it's only physical. And the higher that your HP is, you're going to get up to 30% damage reduction uh, depending on your star rating, it's only going to be it's going to be two fifteen percent up to thirty percent. But you also, when he takes a hit that would normally kill him, he'll revive once per match with fifteen to thirty percent HP, depending on your star level. So what his talent does here is it basically makes him almost one-shot proof. The only way that you can really one-shot him is to have some way to inflict post-battle damage, uh, post-battle fixed damage to him, 
and there's not too many heroes that can do that. There's only a few. Uh, Bernhardt, Elwin. Actually, I don't know if Elwin can do it. Maybe an Elwin if you're going to be running um, the Bloodthirster. Uh, what's it? The Not Bloodthirster. The Bloodsword Hunting and a Thor's Amulet or something of the sort. But uh, Vargas, Lanford... Uh, Leon Hart they can probably one shot Vargas but again though their infantry class they probably should be one shotting him anyway uh, so mo moving back on to in the equipment there's not really too much equipment for weapons that are available for Vargas what you're going to want to use for him is going to be the only SSR that you can really use for him is going to be the Yggdrasil branch there he does also have access to the Cursed Lance but Cursed Lance only activates when you attack which is fairly fairly useless for someone who is playing the role of a tank who wants to be ending up taking hits from other people so SSR Yggdrasil branch is going to be your go-to because it gives you some defense boost here as well as it ignores some of the enemy's defense when you're attacking so it kinda plays perfectly into his role of using power stab and ignoring a little bit of extra da defense to give you a little extra damage. Uh, when it comes to armor, Vargas has th three options for really his top options of the SSR accessories. Uh, those options are going to be the Bloodline Magic Armor, which has a gives you HP and defense, unconditional, and when you take melee damage, there's a 30% chance to reduce damage by 30%. The Aeolus Battle Armor does the same thing except for range damage. Same percentage chance, same percentage reduction. Uh, the third armor that you will con potentially consider is going to be the Gaia Armor, but this is going to be slightly lower, um, lower rating in terms of potential use for Vargas in that it only gives defense boost on on the defensive phase, so when you're being attacked. And since Vargas kind of plays the role of not just a tank, but also as a, a tank with a gun that's going to be destroying others on his phase, you do want to have the extra defense for your turn. And for that reason, Aeolus Battle Armor and, and Bloodline Armor, Magic Armor, are going to be slightly better. Uh, in my opinion, I think that the Bloodline or the Aeolus Battle Armor is slightly better than the Bloodline Magic Armor. So let me pull that up really quick here. The armor, the Aeolus Battle Armor, is slightly better than the Bloodline Magic Armor because since it does ranged attack and Vargas is completely worthless when it comes to his magic defense stat this does give him a slightly better chance of surviving when hit by a single target spell rather than the bloodline magic armor which only reduces damage for physical melee attacks so uh, the problem with bloodline magic armor is Vargas is already so tanky he doesn't really need extra damage reduction for melee attacks because he already kind of tanks them so well he doesn't need the extra defense from a or the the extra damage reduction for melee attacks so it is nice to have as a safety measure but if you do have access to an aeolus battle armor i would personally recommend that over the bloodline it's just slightly better because of the fact that Vargas is completely worthless when it comes to magic damage and this could really help him. Uh, so moving on to helmets, Vargas really only has two options here and one is kind of slightly better than the, than the other one. So you have the Vampire's Mask and the Aeneas Helmet. Aeneas is going to be slightly better in that it gives you defense and it gives you a huge 10% HP at, at max level. Uh, the Vampire Mask does give you a higher top end defense, but again, the problem with Vargas is damage from, from magic 
the extra HP here is going to be really helpful for potentially pushing you pushing your HP just high enough so that you don't get one shot. Uh, but if you do have a vampire mask that's sitting around that's that you don't need for your Leon or Sonya or pretty much anyone who anyone else who would using be, be using this, you can go ahead and throw this on Vargas if you really don't have any other options. But for the most part, most people should have an Aeneas helmet because of how rare, how common of a drop it is when it comes to SSR helmets. Uh, so finally, moving on to accessories. Vargas does have access to Overlord Badge, Spirit Boots, and Divine Boots, as well as the Sage Am or the King Amulet. Uh, between the four, in order of best to worst, I would probably rate them at Spirit Boots number one, Divine Boots number two, and then tied for last spot is going to be King Amulet and Overlord Badge. The reason that I put Overlord Badge so low is that it doesn't give you any defense. It does give some percentage defense, but the lack of flat defense stat kind of hurts it so bad because of the fact that Vargas relies kind of heavily on making sure that his defense is high to get the extra attack. And also, it's better to have a little bit of extra defense from your, from your accessory should you need it. So for that reason, King Amulet and Overlord Badge, I personally rate as the lowest of the four accessories that Vargas would use. Uh, the reason that Divine Boots is only number two is that, and the reason that they're number two and above King Amulet and Overlord, Overlord Badge is Vargas is a part of Strategic Masters faction as well. And Strategic Masters is known for having really high mobility heroes and having the extra mobility never hurt anyone and in Vargas's case being a part of a high mobility faction being able to move one extra space is going to help him to keep up in some of the cases where you really need him to and this brings us finally to spirit boots which in my opinion are far and away just the number one choice because of just how much tactical variety that they bring you they allow you to retreat to make sure that someone can hit the uh, the enemy from the, sp the same spot that you attacked from they can let you hit and then move forward to advance or there's just so much repositioning so much you can do with repositioning and that's also a huge part about why leon is so good and giving boots to vargas turns him into kind of a a tank leon with only three mobility and only two block retreat. So they do give perfect stats for tanks as well as perfect percentage stats. And for that reason, I think these are the ideal accessory. If you can get these for Vargas, you definitely should probably be upgrading them as soon as possible because once you have had a taste of a Spirit Boots Vargas where you power stab someone and then run away I think that you'll you'll see why I recommended these things so highly. They they really just do so much and they give the perfect stats for what Varg for what Vargas does. So that's it for this guide. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I tried to keep things as brief as I possibly could. Yeah, but I do realize that this video did run quite a bit a bit longer than I would have expected. Anyways, that's it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye.